Hi, welcome to Model Railroad University's course 104 on wiring the tortoise switch machine. In the last episode 103, we actually learned how to mount the machine. Now we're going to learn how to wire it into the railroad so that we have control over both the switch machine and the turnout. And that's the first thing to realize is that model railroaders have a difference of opinion. Well, not a difference of opinion, but they have a different way of looking at things. When I was a switchman on the real railroad, a switch like this was a switch, not a turnout, as in model railroad language. The reason we call it a turnout in model railroading is because we have to distinguish between that and a switch. So if I have a switch, like this one that we've been working on for some time, our double pull, double throw, I have to discern between that and my turnout. So therefore, the use of the terminology from one to the other. Okay, so what did I do to get this ready from the last episode until now? Well, I've done several things. First thing I did was I took a drill mounted with um, a drill bit the same size as what I drilled out the switch machines with, and I drilled through right here at the tail end of my frog on both of my turnouts. And I took a green wire, because that's what I use for my frogs, and I pulled that up through the layout and into the position here for the frog so that I was able to get power to this frog. Now, what did that get me? Well, it got me the ability to operate my trains, kinda, sorta, if this frog was powered, which it is not yet. So let's take a look at that first. I've got my throttle here, my NCE throttle. And what I'm going to do is I've already got it set up for reverse. Let's run down here. I'm going to set it really, really slowly. And I'm going to swap you over here. Oh, what happened? Why did it do that? Well, it went. Didn't go very well, though. Let's go back the other way. Yeah, a little faster so I didn't have the trouble. Okay, here's what happened. I do not have power as yet to this frog. Well, I need power to that frog in order to ensure that I'm going to get good operation across this turnout. And I don't have it yet. And that's one thing about working with DCC is you want to power the frogs as much as possible so that we don't have any dead spots, especially for smaller locomotives. And while mine is a little bit small, it's not really small, but it is a little bit. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're going to do. I brought up from the bottom my power from my brown and orange wires. These are the actual contacts for my switch machine, which is mounted down underneath the layout here below my thing. This is my yellow and browns that are coming out. I have powered the green wire from the switch machine underneath here up to my frog, so I'm ready to go. Now, the other thing that I've done is I have taken the power wires that I have running the bus underneath the railroad. I have a black and white set. I tied into them and I brought them up on top. And that's this wire that I brought in so that I have the power from downstairs available up here on top of the railroad. So let's do this. Let's take the black wire, let's say it's a 50-50 shot. So we'll take the black wire, we'll put it on the brown. I got a couple of wire nuts here, so we can wire that up. And what I'm doing is powering that frog down there on the bottom. Put the white on the orange, gets my power from my power bus. There we go. And I think you can see pretty well. Okay, now let's bring that engine back into the picture. We'll put him on reverse, and we'll bring him back here. Here he comes. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a buzzing there. That buzzing is a short. Unfortunately, I guessed wrong. I had a 50-50 shot that I would get these wires hooked up correctly. Now, I'm not a bit worried about the fact that they weren't right. All I have to do is simply take the black and the brown that I had together, take the black and put it over to orange. So I'll swap these out reverse them from what I had, and hook them back up. And I'll put the white over to the brown. 
Now, why was I not worried? I created a short on purpose. I'm not worried because every DC command control system out there has an automatic circuit breaker built into it. So I wasn't going to hurt the railroad by hooking him up in the opposite direction, even though I had a 50-50 shot. So let's go to view up overhead. We'll go back to reverse. And we'll bring it back through again. No problems whatsoever. Okay, so 50-50 shot that I was going to get it right. Second time, got it. Got the other 50 right. At any rate, so now what I can do is I can take these off. I'm going to keep a mental note that my black wire goes to orient. There are all kinds of instructions out there on how to wire these things up and get them right the first time. And if you want to go to the trouble to try and figure out, well, which wire goes to my straight rail and which wire goes to my alternate rail and all that kind of stuff, more power to you. I just took them up and go for it. And if it's not right, I reverse it. Okay, so let's take a look then at how I'm going to throw that turnout from one side to the other. This has got the frog wired so that my polarities are correct. And I want to go back real quick and, and go over that for why. This is the south rail. It's the rail that's closest to you. Okay. My rail over here is the north rail, the rail that's on top, furthest away from you. And I'm talking model railroad terminology now. South rail, north rail. When this turnout is thrown as it is now for the straight route, this south rail goes all the way straight through. The north rail comes here and catches my point and puts me into the frog. So my frog needs to be north. And that's why I drilled through the layout with my uh, drill here and got that wire up in there so I could throw that frog from one side to the other. When my turnout throws the other way so that my points are against the south rail, and that's why we need to throw back and forth on the frog between north and south because the frog changes its polarity depending on which way the track is going. We go back to our old standard switch that we wired way back in episode 102. It's a crossover switch. And in this case, the yellow and the blue would be my power in. So I would take my bus wires, hook them to the blue and uh, yellow. And I would take my tortoise here and hook my black and gray to the black and gray of my tortoise. If it threw the wrong direction, if I had a, a panel here that through, and you can see that on an example from my layout. If you actually threw that from one side to the other, um, I could simply take that switch and reverse it, turn it up upside down, and it would be throwing the proper direction. So the cheapest way out, of course, is that um, toggle switch. It's only a couple of three dollars. Uh, get your control, and you can have the indications like I had on the front of my railroad. Now, I have another problem, though, on my railroad that I have a lot of turnouts that are back a little bit too far to reach, especially when I have cars in front of them. And also, it's a little bit hard for me to see in some cases. As a matter of fact, it's impossible in some of my locations. So what am I going to do there? I'm going to one that's called the Intua switch. This is how it comes packaged up, uh, called the Intua switch. And it has all kinds of diagrams here. Mine happens to be the crossover here. It's a crossover the other way, and there's singles. Uh, Shelly Levy owns this company, and he is more than willing to make custom panels for you like this. This mounts up on my vertical surface, and it has a nice slope to it so that it, you can see it when you're standing up above it. Now, I've taken his yellow and purple wires, which he gives me here, that go to my gray and black on my tortoise switch machine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to hook up. There, I'm hooked up. And magically, you can see that I now have a blue light here, and I have a green light indicating that that's the direction that the turnout is thrown. Touch it. There we go. If I touch it, it's going to go to red. The advantage to the Intua switch is that it has memory. That red and that green light will stay as long as it needs to stay. You can power the railroad off, go to Florida, and spend the winter time, and come back. And when you turn that layout back on, the Intua switch will remember where that turnout was actually thrown, and it will give you the same indication again. Where I have turnouts that are way back away from me, I can't see them, now I have an indication of how that turnout is thrown so I can tell 
if the locomotive is either going to go straight or come into the side lift. And there we go, the next method. The next method I have, okay, this is called a rabbit, and it's this little board right here. And it controls the tortoise switch machine from one of two ways. I can either control it from this switch, which in this case I have a momentary contact uh, toggle switch that simply moves either left or right and centers up. And I'll tell you why we're doing that. Or I can control it from my hand controller from my NCE. So let's hook it up and let's see what it does. We need the power terminals and there are very explicit instructions on how this is to be hooked up and used that come with it so you'll have no problem hooking this up. I use it very, very simply. This uh, rabbit is capable actually of being able to detect the train coming from one direction and throwing the turnout to a line before the train gets there. Um, it's capable of doing macros. Macros are that complicated stuff where you can push a button and it lines all your switches back into track five or track three or main line, whatever you want. Um, this rabbit is totally programmable. Um, really cool device, I think. I use it in its simplest form, but uh, nonetheless, we'll, we'll go over how I go about it. Okay, so what I have is the machine hooked up here. And very quickly, what we can do here, this is the... Um, toggle switch, and I'm going to try and get this so you can see it as well. Okay, we're going to hit that. The red light says, okay, Miles, I'm working. No, but nothing happened. Well, that's because I pushed it the same way it's already thrown. So let's throw it the other way, and voila, it's moving. And we'll throw it back my original way, and it goes back. Now, the reason it needs to be momentary is if I were to put a switch on there that locked to one side or locked to the other side, it would lock out my ability to use my hand controller because the locking switch takes over. So let's take a look now at what happens when I do this. I'm going to push shift, select, and I get accessory on my throttle. Okay, I want accessory one. And I say enter just like a computer. It says you want to go one or two. Well, let's try one and see if it'll throw. Yep, over it comes. And if I do shift, select, I get accessory. I want accessory one and say yes. And I'm going to say this time, let's go to two. And it's going to throw over. So it's totally controllable by my hand controller. The neat thing about that is that now I can actually set up my throttles or actually set up my rabbits with numbers Let's say I, I don't have that many, but let's say I have 60 switch, switch machines uh, turnouts here on the layout. I can number every one of them from 1 through 60. Then, so long as I number them some way, either on the, the fake switch motor or on the front of my panel or my control panel or whatever it happens to be, let's say number 25, I would say select accessory, number 25, and then I'd have the option to throw it either straight or t uh, reversed right from my controller, my hand controller, and it would work. Or I could mount up my momentary switch and throw it there if I wanted to. I can also, with the Rabbit, have a central dispatch panel. Because that switch is momentary, I can put one momentary at the layout, let the train engineer run his turnout, or I could put one back at the dispatch panel for the dispatcher to hit his momentary contact and he could throw the switch. Obviously, there's a little danger there because one can throw the switch under the other, but you could also make a lockout for the guy out on the railroad so that he couldn't lock out and give control to the dispatcher. But it gives you an all kinds of options on how to route the power, how to make it happen. Absolutely fantastic device. Can't say enough good things about it. I use the two and two switch as well. I use them both. As a matter of fact, I use all three of them on my railroad. And I hope this has helped a bunch in getting your layout up and wired and ready to go. The next episode, 105, we'll discuss some of the things that I think help in wiring. Uh, some of the tips and tricks and accessories that I've made up that at least make it somewhat fun for me. I mean, wiring is not obviously the best and most fun thing for a lot of us, but it certainly makes it a lot easier. So until next time, happy model railroading.